So again, guys, uh, I have uh, had a subscriber, actually a couple of different subscribers, uh, a while back. I don't remember exactly when it was. They uh, hit me up about doing an arrow tuning uh, video. Um, I actually had done one before, a year or so ago, something like that. Uh, but this is going to be kind of a shortened, uh, condensed version of arrow tuning. How I do it, uh, how I prefer to do it. Um, lots of different methods. There's bare shaft tuning, paper tuning. Uh, there's all different kinds of ways to do it. Uh, and in my opinion, some of them, uh, especially for a beginner, um, could turn into a kind of a frustrating experience. Because, um, you know, typically most people don't want to buy you know, two or three or four dozen arrow shafts or arrows or whatever and find out that, you know, going through all these processes that they have uh, ruined a set of arrows or multiple sets of arrows, you know. So, so what we want to try to do is avoid that. This is cost effective uh, in the long run. If you follow, follow this instructions pretty easily uh, or pretty... It, it, it's it's a pretty easy method and it works and it's something that you can do now there is a little bit of an investment involved I will tell you that uh, number one with time number two uh, over the long haul uh, if you're not used to doing this kind of stuff this could actually save you some money too um, the winds blowing like crazy out here because this front's coming in and it's I had to just come around on this side of the house so I could do this video so sorry uh, about that but anyway um, the way I do it, uh, more often than not, I have bare shaft tuned, I've done all that, but the way I typically do it, especially with a new bow, uh, from one bow to the next, they may be very similar uh, in draw weight and length of bow and so on and so forth, but uh, it's always good to find which, which arrow shoots best in that bow. Now, my general method of, of tuning arrows, Okay, is you can buy a kit, a, a tuning kit or a test kit of shafts. Some decisions to make. Okay, right off the bat, you need to decide uh, the length of arrow you want to shoot. And the way I recommend getting that, if you have help, take the, the test kit arrows uh, and or any arrow and uh, have somebody help you if, if possible have somebody help you and draw your bow don't shoot it just draw your bow your normal your normal draw length or whatever and have them mark the arrow okay and then add about half inch or an inch to that just to make sure you got clearance from your broadhead so you don't draw it too far okay once you've done that you taper the point uh, of the arrow and this, the next decision you, you make is is you're going to have to decide what weight point you're going to shoot. All right, you're going to shoot 150 grain, you're going to shoot 175, 190, 200, whatever it is. Put that on that test kit and make sure it's the same weight as what your broadheads are. Okay. Broadhead, I mean, uh, uh, field points are fairly inexpensive. You can get those a lot of different places, uh, glue on type, anyway. And I'm assuming this would work for carbon shafts too. I, you know, I don't, I don't typically use carbon, but I have in the past, and I, you know, I, I do the same method, and it works. Um, okay, test kits. <coughs> Sorry, I'm kind of jumping back and forth. Test kits. You can get them <coughs> in a couple of different places or a couple of different ways. Sherwood shaft, Sherwood shafts. They're they're online. They they sell for. Uh, they sell Douglas fir shafts like this. They will sell you a test kit with bare shafts, you know, in increments of, of 45 to 55, and from 55 to 65, or 65 to 75, whatever, you know. I would suggest one of these test kits getting, if your bow is a 50 pound draw weight bow, depending on your draw length and everything else, but I, I would, if you have a 28 inch draw, we're assuming that you have a 28 inch draw, okay? I would go as far, like if you have a 50 pound bow, I would go some, get some 45 55s, I would get some 55 65s, and I would get some 65 75s. 
about 10 pounds on either side of what your draw weight of your bow is, start there. Okay, you, that'll give you three arrows or three shafts to try. All right, fletch them up, fletch them all up the same, but make sure that you mark them what they are, what the, what the draw weight or spine weight of that arrow is. Mark it good, you know, somewhere up here by the fletching or something like that. Just make sure you got them marked, okay? And then, you know, like I said before, get somebody to help you and cut your arrows, taper them, put your point on it, fletch them, make sure you got them fletched with whatever, you know, length feathers you're gonna use, and mark them. Most important thing, mark them so you know which one you're shooting. Take all three of those weight groups at the length that you want to shoot and the point weight you want to shoot. Go out to your target at 10 yards, somewhere or 10 steps. I don't usually have, I don't have it marked out, but I just step off about 10 steps and I shoot from there, okay? Shoot all three of those arrows, you know, maybe five, six, seven, eight times, okay? Uh, each. Shoot them all, just shoot, you put them in your quiver, or whatever, put them in your pocket, whatever, and shoot all three arrows and do it, repeat the process. Just keep repeating that process, and but make mental notes as to which one is impacting closest to the bullseye. All right. Uh, once you, you'll probably pretty quickly figure out which ones fly better or which one or which couple of those arrows is flying better than the other. One that is super overspined is not gonna fly great for you, okay? One that's too weak, it may fly decent a time or two, but you'll always have that little bit of a, you know, what I like to call a fishtail or a paradox of the arrow flying through the air. One of those arrows is gonna be impacting more consistently to the center of what you're shooting at. That's the one you need to hone in on. But don't make the mistake of going too quickly. Don't go out and shoot two or three shots, self. Oh, that's the one, don't do that. Put it down, put it up, go back the next day, whatever. Just take your time in this process so you're not sitting around wasting money. Shoot them again. Back up to 20, 25 steps. Watch that arrow. See which one is impacting closer or on the on the target where you want it to. Because one will impact the right, one will impact to the left. One will be impacting closer to the center, the center line of what you're trying to shoot. That's the one that you need to key in on. Okay, uh, that's what I typically do. All right, and then whenever I build my shafts, I order shafts that are that spine weight, and then I build a set of arrows out of it, or assemble a set of arrows out of it like that. Okay, that works pretty well. I mean, a lot of most of my bows are pretty much pretty close to the same draw weight, you know, within 10 pounds of each other. But it certainly can make a difference because my draw length is a little longer. Uh, you know, you just have to play with that yourself. Again, make those decisions up front. How long you want the arrow, what weight point you want on the arrow, and go from there. And you use the test kit. Uh, I think Three Rivers, some of these other people sell test kits that are bare shafts uh, that you can fletch up on your own. Make sure that you mark them. Make sure, and they also, I think Three Rivers sells some that's already fletched, okay? Um, it's a good tool and it works uh, but take your time and don't get in a hurry about this process now the subscriber said something about need to talk about knock left knock right and that's when you're bear shaft tuning all right that means shooting arrow shooting shafts test kits basically uh, without fletching on them and that will assuming that you have good form a good release and you, you're pretty proficient at your shot process. You can bear shaft tune. All right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dive too far into that. I know that you know if you knock right or knock left, you're obviously overspined or underspined, so on and so forth. But there is a video, and I'll, I'll put a, a link to the video uh, in the description down there. And I encourage you if you're going to try attempt to do bear shaft tuning, uh, I would encourage you to go watch that video. It's an older video, it's about eight or 10 years old. Uh, Ken Beck at Black Widow Bows uh, does an excellent job of explaining knock left, knock right, how to correct it, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying 
go to that video is because he has slow motion cameras and you know he's obviously got photographers and stuff like that so me sitting here describing it to you uh, he has a very very comprehensive video of, of what each one of those to knock right knock right knock left means how to fix it how to address it and so on and so forth so I would encourage you to watch that video if you are going to bear shaft tune um, I, I have done that where you know and to me uh, I get just as good a result using my method, okay, uh, and I, and I do fine with that. Uh, if you want to get all off into to the bear shaft tuning and stuff like that, which I encourage you to try it, just do it and see what you what you come up with. Uh, but it can be frustrating if your shot process and your form is not uh, uh, pretty well honed. Uh, this my method is uh, I've been doing it for a very long time. And I still have some test kits made up that when I get a new bow or something like that, the first thing I do is go grab my test kit, go out there and, and uh, see which arrows work best in it. So, um, again, make those decisions up front. Ask questions. Uh, now, paper tuning, and if you start getting all off into that, uh, you know, I, I, I personally do not do that. Um, there is a there is a reason for you paper tuning. I agree 100. percent You know it can help out with some certain things. But if you you know, I try to keep things out of the weeds. Okay, I try to keep things practical for the beginner. I try to keep things where uh, you, this is something you can do in your garage in your back backyard. Okay, and with minimal tools, with minimal uh, time, uh, minimal frustration. <laughs> so. Anyway, I hope this helps, and again, uh, if you want to see uh, uh, a really good video with slow motion cameras and stuff like that, go see Ken Beck's video. I'm not affiliated with Black Widow bows at all. I've shot them. I've, I've owned a couple of them. I don't own any more Black Widow bows, but uh, they're great bows if that's what you want to shoot. But uh, I'm not trying to sell Black Widow bows. I'm just trying to tell you his video about arrow tuning uh, is... About 10 minutes long, it's pretty straightforward, and it will certainly uh, answer your questions about knock right, knock left, and how to fix that. So, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and if you got any questions, again, put it down there at the bottom, and I'll be happy to try to help you out.